Okay, welcome to lesson 12. Um, the title of this is Nonlinear Models in a Data Context. So um, we've been working with linear models, and with linear models, um, if we can informally sort of draw a line that fits the data, we know how to write the equation of that line just by finding two points. And um, so we don't really have the skills to write the equation for nonlinear models, but they can help us understand the linear ones even better. So even though this lesson is optional, um, if you have the time, I'd recommend just listening to it, even if you don't do the problem set. You could um, get something out of it just by doing the lesson part. Okay, so our first example um, has to do with um, growing flowers, dahlias. And we're going to compare what happens in a in a flower bed that does not have compost added and one that does. So let's let's go ahead and read it. A group of students wanted to determine whether or not compost is beneficial in plant growth. The students used the dahlia flower to study the effect of composting. They planted eight dahlias in a bed with no compost and another eight in a bed with compost. They measured the height of each plant over a nine week period. They found that the median growth height Oh, I'm mean, sorry. They found the median growth height for each group of eight plants. Um, the table below shows the results of the experiment for the dahlias grown in non-compost beds. Okay, so we have um, we have nine weeks, and we're going to be plotting the the data for um, the the median height. So these represent the median height of all eight plants. Okay, and that's that's good um, science uh, process to to have not just one plant in each bed, but eight because there will be some variety no matter what. So um, so this represents the median height. Okay, so the data has been given to us. Um, so now we're asked to, on the grid, and the grid is given as well, so that's nice, construct a scatter plot of the non-compost data. So um, let me get you started. So we would have at week one, the height was nine inches. So week one, nine inches. Looks more like 10, about right there. So week one, nine inches, week two, 12.75, and so on. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and um, plot the data and then you're asked to draw a line that you think fits the data reasonably well. Okay, so here is the completed scatter plot for the non-compost non data. Not only um, does this definitely look like a linear trend? It almost looks like the equation of a line itself, not not so scattered. Um, so here's a line that pretty much goes through every single data point on that. So here's the the linear model. Okay, so let's look at exercise three, and it asks us to find the rate of change of your line. Interpret the rate of change in terms of growth in height over time. All right, so how are we going to find the rate of change for a line like this? Well, if we just choose um, a couple of points, they can be anywhere. I can choose this point and this point or <clears throat> any two points on that line. So those two look look fine. So um, you can choose whichever ones you like. It um, <clears throat> should come out very similar. So we have, um, we have, which ones did I? Week three and week five. Okay, so week three, um, the point is three and 16 and 25 hundredths. And at week five, we have 23. inches. Okay, so the rate of change is going to be the change in the height 
Make the change in the, the dependent variable. So this would be 23 minus 16 and 25 hundredths divided by the change in time, which is going to be two weeks. Okay, so this um, subtraction 6.75 divided by 2, which is going to be 3 and 3. Okay, so using those two points, I found a rate of change of about 3.4, and now what are the units on my rate of change? 3.4 inches per week because I have inches in the denominator and weeks in the, I mean in the numerator and weeks in the, in the denominator. So interpret the rate of change in terms of growth. Um, the plants grow. on average about 3.4 inches each week. Okay, so now we're going to um, look at number four and we're going to look at that rate of change. So describe the growth change in height from week to week by subtracting the previous week's height from the current height. Record the weekly growth in the third column in the table below. The median growth for the dahlias from week one to week two was 3.75 inches, okay, because they went from 9 inches to 12.75. So from 12.75 to 16.25, we've got um, 3.5, about 3.5 inches, okay, Doing that subtraction, I actually find it easier to count up. So from 16.25 to 19 um, and a half, that would be 0.75 and 2.5. That would be 3.5, 2 uh, 3.25 on the next one. Okay. So there is some variation here, but not very much, right? Um, you may have gotten something different if you use two different points for the slope, obviously. Um, this one is 3.5 from 1950 to 23 is 3.5. And then this next group, sorry, next week it grew 3 and 75 hundredths inches. And then um, up to 30 would be... 3.25 the following week, and then 3.75, and then 3.5 the, the last week. Okay, so I got 3.4 for the slope. Any Anywhere um, these rate of changes go from 3.25 up to... 3.75, so that's about right in the middle of that. So about 3.4, 3.5 would be reasonable. And so you can see by these rates of change from week to week why this graph looked so, um, so evenly spaced. Okay, so as the number of weeks increases, describe how the weekly growth is changing. So here's where we're going to write that statement that compares the two variables. As the weeks increase, the plant height, blah, blah, blah. So go ahead and pause the video and do that. You could also um, move on to six and seven at the same time. Okay, so let's look at number five. Um, there's uh, different ways we could, we could phrase this, but um, one way would be as the number of weeks increases,
as the number of weeks increases, the weekly growth stays the same or stays about the same. Okay, so each week that plant is growing about three and a half inches. Three point, I'm going to say 3.4 because that's the slope I got, about 3.4 inches each week. Okay, how does the growth each week compare to the slope of the line that you drew? Um, well, we saw that um, we saw that the weekly growth went from 3.25 up to 3.75. So we could say that um, the slope 3.4, is um, is in the middle of those is in the middle of those values okay so it it's kind of an average growth per week varies a little bit each week but it centers on about 3.4 3.5 Estimate the median height of the dahlias at eight and a half weeks. Explain how you made your estimate. So I gave you time to work on this one too. So let's go back and look at the data. Um, at eight weeks, it was 3.375. I mean, three point, yeah, 33.75 inches. And then at week nine, 37.25 inches. So we're asked at eight and a half weeks. So what do we think? Well, it should be about half of the growth. So if, if um, let's go back, I'll write it here. So if the plant grows, oops, the plant grows 3.4 inches a week, in one week, then in half a week, um, it would be half that, right? Then in um, 0 0.5 weeks, it would grow half of that, which would be um, 1.7 it would grow, whoops, it would grow 1.7 inches. So my estimate would be where it started plus 1.75. So it would be 33.75 plus 1.7, which is equal to 35.45. Um, yeah, 35.45 or approximately 35.5 inches. Okay, so there's, there's my estimate. Um, Okay, so it's not going to be exactly that. So there are other ways to do that as well. I could come back to my graph and use it and look at eight and a half weeks. Um, how tall is that plant? It's about right there. Um, 35, that's 36. So 35.5, somewhere around there. Okay, my graph probably estimates a little bit lower than that, maybe 35.2. That's not a straight line. 
So somewhere right up in there between 35 and 36, probably 35.2 or 3. So it's another way to do it just from looking at the graph eight and a half weeks. Okay, a third way to find that eight and a half week data would have been to write the equation of this line, which we didn't do. We only found the slope. Um, we didn't find the actual equation. We didn't weren't asked to, and we didn't really need to for the problem. But if you had the equation, then you could put in 8.5 weeks, and it would give you a value. Okay, so let's look. So that's this has been a linear model, just like the ones we've been doing. It's a, it's a very strong linear trend in that data. Okay, now we're going to look at the compost bed. So Okay, so find this table with the data for the nine weeks of growth in the compost bed. <coughs> and you can see pretty clearly that it's having an effect um, if you just look at week nine, even. If you look at week nine and compare it to week nine of the non-compost non bed, it looks like it's about getting close to triple the height. Okay, so let's look at what you're supposed to do. You're going to construct a scatter plot um, and the grid has been given here for you with the weeks and the median height for the compost data. And you're asked in number nine, does it form a linear pattern? And then Number 10 asks you to do the same thing we did with the non-compost data and to find the weekly growth um, in inches for the nine weeks. So each week um, looks like from week one to week two of the, of the compost data was a similar type of weekly growth. And then, but you're gonna do that for all of them through, through week nine. And then you're asked to make another statement. As the number of weeks increases, describe how the growth changes. So we're obviously going to see some change. It's not going to stay at 3.5 the whole time. It can't, right? Because we've got this, um, these really tall flowers here at the end. So we want to look at how the growth changes over the weeks. And, and then you're going to um, look back at the at your at your scatter plot and try to fit a curve to it. So do as much of that as you feel comfortable doing, and then come back and we will go through it together. Okay, so I have the scatter plot completed here, and. It does not look linear in in the way that the other one did. Um, so we see kind of slow rates, and then you notice it the rate is increasing quite a bit through this part of the graph from about week six through week nine. Um, there's pretty um, steep growth. So from week to week a lot of growth, whereas down here from week to week, not so much growth. Okay, so um, let's look at number 10 together now. So number 10 asked you to subtract, um, find the difference from week to week as you go down this chart. And so I'm going to show you this filled out, and then we'll discuss Number 11, which is to look at these weekly changes and, and um, make a statement about it. Okay, you can check your work against um, these values. And let's talk about it. So um, number 11 is going to ask us to discuss, as the number of weeks increases, describe how the growth changes. Well, we appear to have like a certain type of growth, like right around four inches per week, 
up until week five, at which point the growth rate increases quite a bit. So the growth rate increases, it's 9 and 10. Then it hops up to this 24.5, and then it goes back down again to 15 to 11. So um, we could say that, um, so we could just write an answer to that. So I'm going to write something, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so we're asked to to write a response to this. As the number of weeks increases, describe how the growth changes. So the growth does change. Unlike the first example where the growth rate was the same through the entire nine weeks, in this case, um, weeks one through four, it starts off very similar to the linear example, um, a little bit more, but about four inches per week instead of 3.5. But then in weeks five through seven, we get this huge increase. It starts going really fast um, up until week eight when it begins to slow down a bit. It's still growing, but not growing quite as rapidly. All right, now you're asked to sketch a curve through the data. Um, when sketching a curve, do not connect the ordered pairs, but draw a smooth curve that you think reasonably describes the data. So, okay, so let's look at that. Here is the scatter plot. Yours should look pretty similar. Um, and so what I'm seeing, and one thing that might help you with this would be to use a piece of string or yarn to kind of lay down. So I see the curve coming up like this. Now I'm going to draw it a little bit different than it is in the answer key myself. Um, I'll show you both, but um, <clears throat> I could draw a curve. Let's see, here's my first attempt. I could come up here, and then I'm going to have it even... Um, kind of flatten out like that. So see how it kind of comes up real rapidly and remember what we said happened about week 8 to 9 that the growth rate slowed. So that's right here. Okay, so this is the the steep part right here is that rapid growth um part of, you know, weeks from weeks 5 through 7. We we said weeks 5 through 7 is really fast growth and then it Still growing, but slows down a little bit. Um, the The graph that's in the answer key looks more like this. Um, so it doesn't show that slowing down as as much as I think that one might fit the data better. But you can see there's no, in the way that we're doing this here, there's no really right answer for that. So whatever you see as fitting the data um, will work for this. Okay, so let's go back and look at the questions that we're going to answer for this one. All right, so look at 13. Use the curve to estimate the median height for the dahlias at eight and a half weeks. Explain how you made your estimate. All right, so in this case, we're going to go straight to the curve and use it to estimate the median height. We can't use that rate of change like we did before because the the rate of change is not constant. Okay, We don't have a constant slope or constant rate of change so we can't use that. But we can use our, our closely fitted curve to do that. Um, so let's let's look back at that. We'll use um, start with this one. So using this one, let me get a different color here. Um, eight and a half weeks, that's my point right there. Um, it's this line. So it looks like 80, um, that's 85, like maybe about 86 um, centimeters. Let's look at the other prediction here. Um, right there, um, 80 to 90, again about 85 on, on that one. So 
So I would say I um, estimate about 85 inches. Whoops. For 8.5 weeks. Um, Okay, and explain how we made that estimate. I um, read the um, value off the vertical axis. Whoops. for 8.5 weeks. Okay. Um, so, 14, how does the weekly growth of the dahlias in the compost beds compare to the weekly growth of the dahlias in the non-compost beds? Okay, so um, you would want to say something to the effect of in the non-compost beds, the growth was the same each week for the entire nine weeks. Um, and then for the growth in the compost beds, the growth starts the same, but after four weeks begins to grow at a faster rate. So there's a, a clear difference in the, in the compost. So that, that could be um, something to that effect. Should go into your answer, I'm not gonna write it. All right, so let's look at exercise 15. We're gonna change gears here to, um, this is a great application of data here. Skid marks at an at an accident site, and it's that's the way that um, investigators determine the speed of cars. So when there is an accident, um, how do the investigators determine the speed of the cars involved? One way is to measure the skid marks left by the car and use this length to estimate the speed. So here's a table with data collected from an experiment with a test car. The first column is the length of the skid mark and the second column is the speed of the car in miles per hour. So let's see if we can, before we even um, make the scatter plot, look at a trend here. So <clears throat> we could say the greater the speed, the longer the skid mark, or the longer the skid mark, the greater the speed of the car. So both of those. So this this does tend, the skid marks are increasing, and so is the speed. So let's, um, let's look at a scatter plot of that to see if we can tell if it's linear. Um, so go ahead and plot these um, six data points on that grid. Okay, so here's um, the points plotted. And it, part B says the relationship between speed and skid mark length can be described by a curve. So this is a nonlinear um, situation, and you can kind of see a curve coming through here and then sort of leveling off a little bit. It's like a hill that starts out steep and then levels off. Sketch a curve through the data that best represents the relationship between skid mark length and speed of the car. Remember to draw a smooth curve that does not just connect the ordered pairs. Okay, again, a yarn or a string might help you to do that. Okay, so pause and draw your curve. Okay, so here's a, um, a nice curve that describes this um, skid mark versus speed data. And so um, we have some questions to answer using this curve. So let's go back and forth between those. If the car left a skid mark of 60 feet, what is an estimate for the speed of the car 
explain how you determined the estimate. So let's go back to our graph. So if we want to know a skid mark of 60 feet would be pretty close to our 65 mark. It would be right, right in here. It looks like around 35. Okay, so looking again, so slightly above 35. <clears throat> so um, we could say, oops. about, let's go a little above 35, so we'd go about 38 miles per hour for the speed of the car for a skid mark of 60 feet. Um, explain how you determined the estimate. We use the graph, so you would, could write something to that effect. Okay, a car left a skid mark of 150 feet. Use the curve you sketched to estimate the speed at which the car was traveling. So let's back up. And a skid mark of 150 feet is right here. And that value is between 60 and 65. So um, we could just split the difference there between 60 and 65, almost exactly in the middle of that. So let's just call it, whoops, let's just call it um, about 62.5. Sixty-two and a half miles per hour, 63, 62, whichever, um, close enough. So about about that distance, if they're going 100, and, if the skid mark is 150 feet. If a car on part E leaves a skid mark that is twice as long as another skid mark, was the car going twice as fast? Explain. Let's look at it. We could look at the table and we could look at the values for, um, there's a couple values on the table that are about twice. So the first one I see is the 105 to 205. 205 is about twice as much as 105. And the car, so the skid mark is twice as long, but the speed is not twice the speed. It only went from 50 to 70, not 50 to 100. Okay, another place you could see this same thing would be on, on the graph. So what if we looked at um, 100 miles per hour and 200 miles per hour? So we would see, um, I mean, 100 feet and 200 feet, sorry, skid mark. So 100 feet is um, about 50 and 200 is about 70 there. Um, what, what about if we looked at a different part of the graph? What if we went from 50 to 100? So 50 looks like a, a little over 30 miles per hour and 100 is about um, just under 50 miles per hour. So again, it's not twice the speed for twice the skid mark length. Okay, so to summarize, um, <coughs> we looked at, at a linear pattern with the, the non-compost data, and we saw the rate of change was constant. It wasn't exactly constant because this was real-life data. Okay, but it was pretty constant. Remember, it, the rate of growth was anywhere from 3.2 up to 3.7 inches per, per week. And um, it stayed the same through the entire growth, growth um, time. But when data follow a nonlinear pattern, the rate of change is not constant. So we saw big differences in... Um, the weekly growth in that, not in that compost 
bed data. So that showed that um, that was a good indication that it was a curve, some type of curve or nonlinear pattern. Okay, so again, rate of change is the key to being linear. The rate of change has to be constant for us to have a linear model. Okay, so this was an optional lesson. So you could do the problem set or you could just move on to lesson 13.